Welcome to our review on nuclear fusion. Now this is our second type of nuclear reaction we've looked at and the one that we've got to be very careful not to mix up the name with. In a nuclear fusion reaction, two small hydrogen nuclei are going to join together to make a helium nucleus and as they do so they will release heat energy. We will see nuclear fusion occurring in two key places we need to remember. Number one is stars, like our sun, and number two is in hydrogen bombs. Now what we actually find is that these isotopes of hydrogen are fusing together to make helium and releasing large amounts of energy in both of those cases. In the case of our stars obviously that's going to generate all the heat that we actually use to survive on our planet and in the case of hydrogen bombs it's a very destructive form. What we find then is that the atomic nuclei are positively charged because if you think about the nucleus of an atom then it has protons and neutrons. Neutrons have no charge, protons are positive charge. So overall our nucleus has that positive charge. So if we bring atomic nuclei close together then they will repel each other because they've got those two like charges. In order to get them f actually close enough for them to fuse together then those nuclei must be moving very very fast. So we will find that happening naturally in our stars because it's so hot and under very high pressure that the nuclei are able to get close enough to fuse. To do this on Earth we're going to need very high pressures and very high temperatures and that's very difficult to actually generate safely. Just to give you an example of a typical fusion reaction here, we've got two isotopes of hydrogen. So we've got hydrogen with the atomic mass of one, atomic number one, and hydrogen with the atomic mass of two and the atomic number one. Now those two are going to join together, which gives us our helium with the atomic number of two and the atomic mass of three. If we think about the hydrogen bomb now, obviously we need a high temperature here. So in order to generate the high temperature we need for those fusion reactions to occur, we actually have a nuclear fission in the center. Now what we have in the very middle of our bomb then is a core of uranium-235 or our plutonium-239 and we surround that core with hydrogen. So as that bomb explodes we get an uncontrolled chain reaction occurring. That's going to lead to the release of large amounts of heat and that heat is going to be large enough to allow the fusion of the hydrogen nuclei and that in turn releases even more energy which is why those hydrogen bombs are so destructive. If we were able to carry out a process of nuclear fusion to generate electricity it would have some clear advantages. Number one we wouldn't be creating any carbon dioxide. Secondly there's no radioactive waste being produced and finally we would be producing very large amounts of energy. Because these experimental fusion reactors are incredibly expensive we have a large number of countries that work together so they're able to pool their resources, they're able to pool their money and therefore that means that we're more likely to achieve this nuclear fusion if it's possible because we're going to have a wealth of different scientists and also the funding is spread across a number of countries. In 1989 there was actually a group of scientists who claimed to have fused atoms at room temperature in a process called cold fusion. Now other scientists obviously took that data and tried to repeat their findings but nobody's actually been able to recreate this. So as a result of that cold fusion is not accepted. So this is just an example of why scientists will publish all their reviews and their findings in scientific journals and go to scientific conferences to present their findings so that then there can be this peer reviewed process where other scientists can then try and replicate the process, replicate the results. If they can, then things become accepted. If they can't, they're generally going to be rejected. 